All right, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a big personality on camp, a big personality in the military as a whole. We'll have a look at what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, what their job role is all about, and talk a little bit about their experience and what they have to offer anyone within the military. All right, let's jump straight into it. Let's go meet them. Good morning, sir. Hey, right. How are you? Very well, thank you, sir. I've yeah, come sir. for a chat, if that's all right, sir. Yeah, that's good. Let me just send this on. Back on. In fact, I'm just about to go next door to the church. Do you want to come with me? Yeah, Roger, let's do it, sir. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay, let's go ahead. Okay, so this is St Edward's uh, Catholic Church, and we've also got the World Faith Prayer Room as well here. Oh, nice. So if I show you the World Faith, Faith Prayer Room first. So we've got a small room that any any sort of uh, anybody is welcome to use of faith and non faith and prayer or whatever. Uh, and we've also got little different boxes with for each of the different major faiths, so they've got some resources to use if they want to as well. We've also got a compass to show you the position of Mecca for our, our Muslim recruits as well. So it's 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 really set up for them. Um, we try and it looks a bit blank, but that's done deliberately so that it's usable by all religions and there's no specific things for each, each faith, but um, it's a nice quiet spot where people can come and just have some prayer. It's open 24-7, so that's, that's really good. Does this get used, uh, utilised a lot, does it, sir? Yeah, a fair, fair bit by the recruits. We don't, we don't sort of monitor or keep an eye on it, we just leave people to, to have their quiet time, really. So uh, yeah. I don't know how many people do it, but I know quite a few use it in their own space. Really. To the, into the Catholic Church. So this is the, the Catholic Church. Wow, it's really nice. Yeah. And you'll see at the front we've got the altar and the crucifix where, where the, the priest will conduct Mass. So uh, we're very fortunate we've got a padre from Sandhurst, uh, Father Pip Smith, who comes along and does the, the Catholic Mass every Sunday when we're able to. And there's also reserved sacrament here on the left with a, an ombre there. And also we've got some, some candles as well if people want to come in and pray. So this, this again is a, a space that's open 24-7 for people who want to just, just a bit of peace, a bit of quiet to come and, come and say a prayer. Or not and just sit and enjoy the, the beauty of the silence really. And this, this service is every Sunday you hear this? Yeah, so it's slightly different with COVID, but yeah, every Sunday there's, there's a service, a mass every Sunday. Nice. Okay, so we've had a little walk around. We've seen a couple of the churches, a couple of the chapels and the multi-faith prayer room. Uh, we're now going to sit down and have a brew. Padre's favourite thing to do. Indeed. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me introduce you. Okay, so this is Padre Nigel Kinsella and he's the head Padre here at ATC Purbright. So Padre, while we're having a brew, um, is it alright if we just ask you a couple of questions about yeah, being a Padre on. and your day-to-day -day life and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. First question, um, what's the general role of a, of a Padre in, in brief? So the, the role of the Padre is that um, we look after the pastoral, spiritual, um, moral components really. So there's three parts to our job. So the, the spiritual side is looking after the sort of religious aspects, helping people with sort of signpost people of different faiths. Um, and we also do the sort of normal things you'd associate with a, a minister of religion, you know, church services, or etc, etc. But also for people who are exploring faith or looking at faith, we sort of help and guide them. We're not trying to, we're not trying to convert anybody or anything like that. We're just, we're generally, as people are on a journey, wherever, yeah. um, trying to help them and, and support them, really. So that's part of the spiritual. The pastoral side is we... 
I think mostly we are people who are able to to listen to people. So yep. we we perhaps got a gift of deep listening. So I think that's quite a rare thing in in the world today. Um, and we give people space just to, to sit and to offload and, and to talk things through. And, and sometimes that can be really deep and intense things. You know, people have, oh, I've never told anybody this before, and, and they get it off the chest. Or it can be just sort of more day-to-day irritations. It's just, you know, whinging about things. It's just nice to just, problem shared is a problem halved, isn't it? Really? Definitely. Yeah. So then that, that's, that's another part of our role. So the spiritual, the pastoral, and then the moral component as well. We sort of... In our role, particularly here, we do the teaching of the what's called the values and standards of the British Army. Yep. So there's certain qualities that a British soldier needs to have, um, of which values and standards is really front and centre, really. So you might have heard the, the mnemonic C drill, so courage, discipline, respect for others, integrity, loyalty, and selfless commitment. And we would break those down for, for soldiers com- or recruits coming into Purbright and, and, and just go through each of those, those aspects, just break them down to see see what they understand by it really. So there's the three elements of a of a Padre's job anywhere in the army, yeah, but more so in training we we, we do a lot more values and standards teaching. Yeah, uh, and so just a quick touch on where you're talking about people can come and talk to you and, and you in here that will that will always be there for listening. Is that confidential? Yeah absolutely we we are um, uh, ministers of religion first and foremost and then we're in, we come into the army really so we, we are have certain um, confidentiality according to our sending churches um, so we keep whatever we're able to say confidential however before we have conversations with people we say look if if you're going to harm yourself or somebody else or you're going to breach the official secrets act or cause a serious then we would, you know, disclose, you know, we'd, we'd mention that to somebody. And the reason we do that is, is obviously, I think that's an expectation on society now that we, you know, if somebody says, well, actually, I'm going to harm myself, we do something about it, really. Yeah. Okay, so, so thinking back, like, to when I was joining the army, I'd never expected to, to meet a Padre in the army. I never knew about Padres. I didn't know the army had Padres. It's just the last thing that I expected. Um, and then obviously you come into training and you meet the Padre, etc. How do you become a Padre, does it? Good question. I mean, I think being a Padre in the Army is probably one of the best jobs in the Army because we get to talk and engage with people, so it's a real privilege us, for us to do it. So, so often people ask, how do you become a Padre? Um, unfortunately, the way it works is you have to be a Minister of Religion before you come in the Army. Okay. So you need to be what's called professionally qualified. So different churches have different different rules and guidelines what that means but usually have to do some sort of training and on the job training and then in certain places be be ordained as a minister uh, which can take you know four five six years really Um, so sometimes people in the army you can't transfer into the chaplain's department you have to leave the army be qualified as a a minister of religion and then come back in into the army and then when you come back in you come back in as we're professionally qualified officers, so we do a PQO's course, as it's called, at Sanders with the doctors and the dentists and the physios and the lawyers. And it's because the army recognises that professional qualification, um, and then it tops up the, the sort of green army side of the, of the training and, and puts it all together. So it, it's it's something you you sort of have to have the faith and the and the and the previous experience before you can come into the army. Really. Yeah. Hence we're all so old, you see. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't look old, sir. Yeah, that's very kind. That's right. I wasn't fishing for confidence, but thank you. <laughs> okay, so, so, um, what, why, why are you called a Padre? <laughs> Good question, yes. Um, so Padre comes from the sort of Spanish, Italian, sort of uh, Portuguese, uh, Latin. Um, padre means father priest. Good father, um, so that's where traditionally it's been, and it was sort of adopted in the military. So there's sort of apocryphal stories of how it was in the, in the Spanish War, and then somebody overheard it being used about the minister of religion. But it's it's mainly um, refers to military chaplains, and it's it caught on a few hundred years ago. Yep. So when you when you talk to somebody as padre, you mean as in that's what he's referring to, father priest. Yeah. 
Yes, that's that's uh, answered my question as well, sir. Because I'd never heard of a padre before I joined the army. So ah, it, it there was you always go, a vicar or chaplain or priest. Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot. It worked the opposite way. When I used to be a vicar in church, somebody who was ex-military came and hello, padre, and I was like, what's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so it works the other way as well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so one final question before we finish our drinks. Indeed, and, uh, indeed. Hopefully I go and see the other church that we've not seen so far. Uh, just to confirm, sir, that if anybody was here in training or in a unit in, in the field army anyway, and they feel like they wanted to come and talk to somebody, it does not matter what religion they follow or if they're religious at all, they could always come and speak to yourself or another party. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And we, and we try and emphasize sometimes People think, oh, because we're religious, you can only talk about religious thing. That's not not the case at all, really. Um, certainly, we, we we talk to um, lots of soldiers who have no faith whatsoever, who want to have a chat about things, and we're, so we're not we're not trying to push a faith or religion or convert people or anything like that. We're, we're here to support the soldiers where they are of faith, into faith, practicing religion. I mean, one of the things we do if if somebody's of a different faith is help and support them to connect them to their own faith wherever they may be and or if they've got particular issues with practicing we talk that through really of you know some type of uniform or beards or or, or, or vegetarian meals or whatever so we just help and support them in that as well really. so, but yeah absolutely we're, we're open to talk to, to everybody really so. Oh, brilliant. so should we go and see if we can get in the final place of worship indeed let's do that let's do it so there's a Three or four padres here, sir. Uh, right. So there's there's three regulars yep. padres, and there's a reservist as well. So welcome. So this is this is All Saints Garrison Church. So this traditionally used to be um, the garrison church for the guard depot. So the guards are the the foot soldiers in, in the household division. Um, and they used to come here and do their basic training uh, many years ago. So you see a lot of uh, replicas about, or reminders from, from guards' history, really, while you're here. One of the things that, that really fascinates the soldiers is when they come in and see these colours. So these, as they call them flags, but they're actually called colours. Yep. So these are, as you see in, Hung up in church, and these are a couple of years, a couple of hundred years old. Wow! So as you can see, the, the sort of way we do that is that they sort of get netted when they start to fall apart and disintegrate, and then when they get beyond that, then they will be buried in the ground. And the colours represent uh, Queen and God and the regiment. Yep. And and you probably see on that picture there, as we used to fight a few hundred years ago, you know, the regiment used to defend the colours and fight around the colours. So that's why we have colour sergeants. They used to protect the colours. Um, that's another thing I've just learned today. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, I always say to people, is you know, coming to churches and you look at the history of the regiments and the corps, and you you can learn so much from from in a church, just going yeah. and seeing where people have, have worshipped and prayed and and being really. So, also on the the far right hand side, you'll see a cross. That cross is actually from the, the First World War, from the Somme. So the grenadiers were attacking a, a post and quite a large number, I think 30 officers and, and nearly 700 men died in that, that assault. And so they placed that cross, which is from a thousand year old wood into the, into the ground. And then they had to retreat and the Germans took the ground. Um, and then a few, few weeks and months later, they retook the ground and the cross was there and had been looked after by the Germans. And, you know, so there's part of that, even in warfare, how we respect others, really. Yeah. So we use that as an, an example of, of displaying that. So there's a lot of history just in this room, sir. Yeah, no, absolutely. I say, well, thank you very much for giving us a tour and answering some questions and, and giving us some teachings about the history and, and everything else that you've gave us. I uh, really do appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to, to be able to talk about chaplaincy and to welcome people who, who might be here in the future. So, so please go come and say hello and, uh, and come and enjoy coffee with us. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that was something a bit different. Just want to say a big thank you to Padre for giving us a tour around and you know, doing this video with me today. Make sure that if you are coming to Burbright or you are at Burbright and you do see the Padre, make sure you say hello. 
go and have a chat with him he's a really nice person hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned something i certainly did if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up click the subscribe if you haven't already and i'll catch you again in the video next time catch you later